In Africa, names have meanings, and not just a meaning behind the name, but rather uh, the intention that oftentimes your parent has for you is conveyed in the meaning. My mother called me Trevor because she didn't want to give me a name that she felt would define my path. She didn't want to give me a name that would in some ways prophesy my, my end. And ironically, at that time, in where we lived, Trevor wasn't a common name. So calling me Trevor made me, in a, in a tiny way, exceptional. She wanted me to have the opportunity to be everything that I could or would want to be. And in a strange way, that's, that's what came to be in my life. I've never followed a singular path. I've never gone down a route that people expect. And I've never ended up in situations that anyone would have act, uh, ever expected me to end up in. So in many ways, what she tried to avoid doing, she essentially did, and uh, it turned into a gift. I, I was probably really young when I first discovered it. The earliest memory I have of a joke landing was a physical joke. I was in primary school, I was really young and I was in the school play and I played a, a tortoise and I did something, I think I was walking up the stairs and I did like a really funny stumble step thing and looked at the audience and it floored them and it wasn't in the script and it wasn't, and that was like the first moment where I was like, man, did you just see that? And people thought I really fell and then I, I never knew whether I should tell them or not. That was like a, you know, cause I, I did it in every subsequent play but every audience thought I fell. And so I was just like, this is magic. I can get people to think that I'm falling every time. And I guess that was a moment where I let go of my ego and went, I'm, I'll make the people laugh. I don't care what they think really happened. If uh, a friend brought you here and you have no clue what this is, I'll spend a moment with you. This is the daily show. <laughs> with Trevor Noah, right? I'm the with Trevor Noah part of it. From the time I was born, my movement was restricted because I grew up in a country where the mere fact that my parents were a mixed couple meant that I was born a crime. Sit. I'm someone who has been forced to live between the lines when it comes to color, when it comes to race, when it comes to um, identity. I am someone who has had to learn how to, in essence, change what people see to better get them to a more comfortable place. And and that's something that, I, that I, I don't think I ever thought of as a gift when I was growing up. Just the ability to see the outside world beyond yourself and try to in some way make yourself accessible to that outside world. My last Daily Show program uh, will be August the 6th. I will be wearing a suit. I will more than likely be showered. When Jon Stewart announced his departure from The Daily Show, Obviously there was the initial panic, there was the initial shock, and thereafter there was the question everybody asked, who is going to replace Jon Stewart? Now, I always thought to myself the answer would be no one. No one could replace him. All anyone could do is fill the seat that he left vacant. And so when I spoke to the network, the one thing I made clear was, I wasn't going to try to come and replace this person. I wasn't going to try to come and emulate them. I wasn't going to try to come and repeat any of what they had done. I wanted to create a show that continued the legacy of what Jon Stewart had created at The Daily Show, but also create a show that was having different conversations. I am The Daily Show! Because it was being influenced by different things a show that was younger because the host is younger, a show that was blacker because the host was blacker. I didn't expect to get the job. I was just one of the people who put my name in the hat and I was one of the people where luckily Jon Stewart endorsed me personally and said, I think this is the guy who could do it. I remember when I took over the show, I was still touring around the United States and I met so many people who said the same phrase to me. They said, well, you know, I'm not really political. Yeah, I don't, I don't really get into politics. I don't, I don't pay attention to politics. And now everyone is into politics. Everyone is paying attention. Hard work cannot be separated from success. 
And when I say success, I mean sustained success. You can have a blip or a moment. That for me doesn't define success. Hard work and success, sustained, go hand in hand. What I feel happens a lot of the time is as people, we work hard at the thing that we're not good at. And I think that is sometimes an energy that gets lost. I've always worked in a space where I enjoy what I'm doing and I work hard on what I love doing and what I'm good at. And so I'd rather focus on that. And that way, most days don't feel like work, most challenges don't feel like obstacles, and most successes feel in many ways like a reward for doing what I believed I was meant to do. So I don't take any days for granted. I will catch myself if there is ever a moment where I feel the need to complain about what is definitely a first world problem. All of this is a blessing. All of this is something I couldn't have imagined and all of this is far more than I ever thought that as a human being I would ever receive. And so now I have and it overflows to my family and to my community and to people around me. So I, I definitely don't take that for granted.